We've talked about creating songs using both loops and virtual instruments. Now we're going to take a look at recording live instruments. You've probably already heard one variation of this old adage, junk in, junk out. Well, it remains true here as well. Mixcraft can handle what you put into it, but if it sounds like junk, that's pretty much all you'll get out of it. That being said, when recording vocals, guitar, drums, or other instruments, your sound card, microphones, and preamps, etc. will determine the quality of your sound. In my case here, I'm using a laptop, so relying on my sound card will definitely limit me when recording live instruments. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to take a look at an earlier video on latency and or the video that Jeff Dykhouse did on sound card setup, which is available at Mixcraft under the Mixcraft version 4 tutorial videos. So let's get started recording some live instruments. Again, when you open Mixcraft, you are greeted with selecting a project type. This time we're going to select the first one, record yourself or your band. I recommend that the first thing you do is save your project, and you may also want to fill out some of the author information found under the project tab. If you are going to be working with a click track, set the tempo in the project tab and make sure the metronome is on. Another nice feature is recording count-in, which you will find under mix, recording count-in. You can configure your metronome and your count-in in the preference folder found under File, Preferences, and then Metronome. First thing we see is our metronome sound files, where they're located. You can browse for new ones. The metronome volume. And finally, a checkbox for recording metronome count-in or pre-roll. And also, how many measures you want the count-in to be. I've selected two measures. Click OK. Now let's go up to Track 1. And next to the arm button, you will see downward facing arrow button. This is your device and channel selection button. If we click on it, we can see the devices currently available. We have our microphone and line in, which is our mini jack here on our laptop. We have our record playback. And finally, we have an input for the M Audio Fast Track Ultra 8R, which is currently the audio interface that I will be using. For the moment, let's go back to our preference file. And let's go to sound device. You can see it's defaulted to the wave driver. Notice the buffer size here. Right now it's defaulted to 2048, which is the lowest buffer size available. And you can see the latency is 92 milliseconds. What if we increase the buffer size to 57,000? you can see the latency is 2600 milliseconds. This is too much latency for us. We can go over to the WaveRT driver, which is available on Windows 7, and you can see that the default recording device and playback device both went to my M Audio Fast Track Ultra. Now if I click the box here, which is exclusive mode, which means I can get a latency of less than 20 milliseconds. Let's go select the ACO driver. My Fast Track Ultra is still selected. Here we can see our selection of inputs. And let's go down to Open Mixer. Here is the Fast Track Ultra 8R. Here's where we can adjust our buffer size. Right now it's set at 128. And that's the lowest I can currently go unless I select high performance mode. There's also other parameters that I can select in here. But it's the buffer size that I want to address right now. Let's close out of this window. And then click OK out of your Mixcraft preferences. Now let's go up to our device and channel selection button. Here you see the ins for channels 1 and 2, 3 and 4, and so on and so forth. If we go to channels 1 and 2, you can see three selections, either stereo, left channel, or right channel. If you're going to be utilizing both channel 1 and 2, then you will select left or right for channel 1, and then the opposite channel for analog in 2. To demonstrate this, let's choose stereo for track 1. 
you can see once selected it automatically arms. Now let's go down to track 2. And for that one let's select left channel. Now notice what happens in track 1. It unarms because it can't share a stereo channel so instead let's go back to track 1 in 1 and 2 and go to right channel now you can see that both tracks are armed and ready to record one is on the right channel one is on the left channel so with the fast track ultra we're able to record up to eight tracks simultaneously by arming our tracks left and right for 1 and 2 for tracks 3 and 4, left and right, and so on and so forth. Now that being understood, we're ready to track.